Hey, it's Mr. Mabry, and we're going to learn about the digestive system. Now, before we dive into the digestive system, you may want to know how is your notes sheet supposed to be set up. So, let me pull up our note sheet. Your note sheet is going to look like you're not going to draw these little apple cores, but you are going to write down your goal, two definitions, and then you're going to have a big picture that you're going to label as we go along. Now, underneath the picture, and you will need to sketch this picture, so good luck you're gonna have a bunch of bullets for each part now if I were you I would not pause this video and then copy this whole note sheet down I may not even include it in uh, desire to learn but I would just know that you are gonna have a big picture followed by a bunch of little bullets that you'll follow on the slides so with that let's get cracking digestive system why is this system important and what is its job well the job is to take these things mmm yummy apples and then turn them into something that your cells can use so our goal that we're going to write down, the very first thing, so we titled our page Digestive System, we say our goal is to maintain homeostasis. Now, if it's been a while since you remember homeostasis from when we talked about the cell membrane, remember homeostasis means happy, oh yes, well spoken, and healthy. So it's keeping your cells happy and healthy by breaking down food to a usable size. My cells don't know what to do with an apple. An apple is ridiculous. It's like the size of a planet to me. But if I can break that down into little tiny uh, molecules of carbohydrates, then my cells think that's a party. So, 4 trillion cells need 2,000 plus calories every day. That's a really big job, and that's the job of that digestive system. So now we're going to learn part by part how we go from apples into calorie-sized molecules for your cells. So write down your goal, write down that fun statistic because I'm going to refer to it this entire week. Now we need to know two big um, vocabulary words for the digestive system and that is mechanical and chemical digestion. So for mechanical digestion it is what it sounds like. It's the physical chomping of food. Now obviously your teeth do this but you're going to find out there are other body parts that also mechanically break down your food. And then there's chemical digestion. What you normally think of when you think about um, the digestive system. It's using those chemicals to break them down into smaller possible pieces. Now here's a new word for you and that word is enzymes. You may have heard me mention this word earlier in the year when you were learning about some chemistry. For us, your mental picture of an enzyme needs to be whatever you think of when you think of stomach acid. It's not stomach acid, but it is instrumental in just like gooing it and, and breaking in those little tiny pieces that look gross when you throw them up. With that being said, um, let's now talk about that huge tube that's your digestive system. It is one long 30-foot tube, and I do want you to have that sentence because I think it's crazy to think that from mouth to anus you are 30 feet long. That's insane. I'm only 6 feet tall, and my digestive system isn't even half my body, so it's a wound up inside of you 30 feet long. That's pretty cool. Okay, time to time to hone those artistic skills of yours. Let's draw this picture in your notes right now. Go ahead and pause me in as best you can. Let's go all the way down here, drawing that liver, the stomach, all of these squiggles. It's okay if it's not beautiful, but you want to have those arrows um, so we can label it as we go. You can pause it now. All right, nice job drawing. Let's jump into the parts. Why don't we start with the mouth? We're going to talk about the mouth, and then there's this region right here that's not really a part of the um, pathway, that 30-foot tube, but it has its own special name, and that name is the pharynx. Now, underneath your drawing, after you've labeled mouth and pharynx, I want you to start a little tiny bullet underneath your drawing for mouth, <clears throat> and I want you to write down teeth. Teeth is our first stop along the way, and it's an instance of mechanical digestion. And then, of course, there's saliva in your mouth, which is how you chemically digest food. And the only food that gets chemically digested in your um, mouth is sugars. Let's go ahead and add that, because that's sort of cool. So if you just let candy sit in your mouth, your saliva will actually break it down, which is sort of cool. And then that pharynx that we mentioned in our video, that is that cavity in the, oh, in the back of your throat. You might have heard a vocal music teacher say lift your palate, your soft palate. That's that region right here where your pharynx is. And then um, that's about it to the mouth. 
I mean, you've been chewing most of your life. There's not much else to say. So let's move on. So we've got our food. It came in here. Chomp, 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 chomp. Got gooey, gooey, gooey. Now we're going to move down this tube, which is known as the esophagus. After you label your picture, let's add some new bullets underneath the picture. Your esophagus um, has this thing called a bolus. And what your bolus is, is the chewed up food. The nasty, goobery glob that's going to go goop down your esophagus. But before it gets there, it has to bypass a flap called the epiglottis. And the flap prevents you from choking. It's this little tiny flap right here that when you're laughing is like, ha, 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 and air is coming out through your um, trachea. But then when you're swallowing, it goes gunk. So when you, so when food goes down, it doesn't accidentally go down your windpipe because the flap's closed. So it's like, ha, 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 ha swallow. Ah, that's why if you're talking while you eat, you're like, I want to tell you a joke, and you start choking because your epiglottis was pushed up as you were eating, and so food went down this pipe instead of your esophagus right here. So don't choke. All right, peristalsis is a muscular contraction of how food moves down this esophagus right here. And what it's like, it's like it's sort of like squeezing toothpaste. So it's like here's the top and it's like squeeze, 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 squeeze. It's goom, 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 goom. So that's your esophagus is actually a muscle that squeezes food, squeezes food down right there. That's pretty fun. All right, when we're done with our esophagus, we are headed straight to this guy, which is your stomach. Now, let's go underneath our picture after we label stomach and let's talk about chemical digestion. As most of you know, there's a really cool acid in your stomach. It's called hydrochloric acid. And to keep the acid from eating away your stomach, you have mucus. Isn't that cool? You got snot inside your stomach. Now, in addition to the mucus, there's something else that your stomach does cause, called mechanical digestion. And how your stomach does mechanical digestion, it doesn't have little tiny teeth in your stomach that chomps, but it has something called peristalsis. And peristalsis is your stomach will do that toothpaste squeeze just like your esophagus and it'll actually compact the food that the hydrochloric acid is digesting. So have you ever put your head on someone's stomach after they've eaten and you're just like sitting there and you're like oh, da, da, and like, oh there's an alien in your stomach there's something alive. There may be an alien in their stomach but probably the reason why their stomach was moving was because their stomach was doing peristalsis for one to two hours after they ate in order to produce this thing called chyme. Chyme is the name for all that acidic crushed up food by peristalsis and it's also what we call puke. Whenever someone has an upset stomach it's what comes out of you when you do reverse peristalsis and blah, and you throw up everywhere. So yay puke, awesome. Now before your food can leave your stomach, it has to pass through something called a sphincter. Now there's two sphincters for your stomach. There's the cardiac sphincter and the pyloric sphincter. And I'm going to want you guys to add these arrows to your drawing. Um, so this cardiac sphincter is this little, little circular muscle that squeezes shut once food's in your stomach so it doesn't come back up your esophagus. Because that's why you get heartburn when your cardiac sphincter isn't properly closed and acid comes back up your esophagus and then right on your chest you're like oh my heart feels like it's on fire well it's not your heart it's stomach acid in your esophagus and then your pyloric sphincter is right here and it's another small circular flap that's closed all the time except when food is done being squeezed and is ready to open up to let it go into your small intestine so why don't we go ahead and come here and let's add these arrows in the cardiac sphincter right here and then the pyloric sphincter right here. All right, and one more thing on the stomach before we leave it alone. Why don't we talk about ulcers? Ulcers are things that happen in your stomach when you get a hole, and that hole is caused by bacteria. Isn't that crazy? That bacteria um, can grow inside your stomach, and it'll make these little holes right here, and then your stomach acid can leak out. Oh, gross. And then it starts to burn away all these cells. So the moral of the story is don't let weird stuff grow in your stomach. Now that's going to be the end of our part one. Please join me for part two so you can find the final half stage of our journey going from our stomach down to our anus. See you soon.